Hello and welcome to the most popular Reaper channel on the internet. Don't fact check that. So today we're going to cover a whole new and very exciting way to trigger actions in Reaper, which I believe would be very useful to all of you with complex action needs, but who don't want to have to memorize a million hotkeys to do them. So say hello to my little friend, the radial menu. The radial menu is a very complex script by Lokasana, and it places an entire world of actions right at your fingertips. It's customizable, and once you get used to it, can allow for a very fluid workflow for the cost of memorizing a single hotkey. So the easiest way to install the radial menu is through Reapack, and Lokasana scripts are available by default through the Rea Team scripts packages, which comes with your Reapack installation. So find the link to install Reapack below, along with easy and quick installation instructions. Once you have Reapack, I suggest downloading and installing every single script by going to Options, Synchronize Packages. And if it's your first time doing this, this may take a while, but it's worth it as you get thousands of new actions and they don't really weigh much because they're just text scripts, then just update it every once in a while and you're off to the races. If all of that sounds like crazy talk, you can also go to Extensions, Reapack, Browse Packages, and you need to first install the Locasana GUI library. So just search for it, right click and click install. For me, it's reinstall because I already have it. And next you wanna also search for radial menu and again, right click to install. Hit apply and in a few seconds, you will have the radial menu ready to rock. How easy is that? Open the action list and search for radial up here and we will find two actions here. This one is to open the radial menu and the next one is for the settings. I'm gonna set Q to open the radial menu, nice and easy. And this is basically the only hotkey I need to memorize. For the beginning though, since we will be modifying the menu, it's also a good idea to assign a hotkey to the settings action. For this, I'll use Control Shift and Q. And I'm not really counting this as a second hotkey to memorize because you'll only need it when you're getting started. So once you hit the hotkey, you get this window and would you look at this? Oh, would you look at this? <laughs> yeah, well, would you look at that? Yeah, Each of these options is a menu with actions or other submenus nested inside. Once you release the hotkey, the menu goes away. And when you press it, it opens under your mouse again. From here, I can go through these menus and do a bunch of stuff. Like let's open the track menu and here I can insert a track. I can color it, show its volume and pan envelopes, maybe record arm it, maybe choose an automation mode. And boom, when I'm done, I just release the key. Now, as you saw, the menu tends to kind of close prematurely or it sometimes repositions itself when I didn't mean to. So let's open the radial setting and go to the options tab and we can choose what happens when the shortcut key is released. The default behavior just closes the menu and also with certain keys, the menu tends to flicker on and off. So you can instead choose to run the highlighted action, but my personal preference is to keep the menu open. I like the options tab a lot where you can turn your click or grid or snapping on and off. You can cycle through ripple editing modes and it even has some extra options like pre or post fader metering, solo in front, spectro peaks. Other than all these actions, you can of course add your own quite easily. And in a minute, we'll open my version where I've added a ton of new actions and menus, but let's quickly go over adding menus and actions. So let's say I opened the track menu and I inserted a bunch of tracks. Next, I want to select all these tracks and let's say I want to give them a color. So far so easy, but now I also want to name these tracks and we don't have an option to do that right now. So what I'm gonna do is open the settings menu and from the settings window, I can go to the track menu and add whatever action I want. So to do that, make sure to choose the menu tab up here. This is the menu we're currently on. If you click on this drop down, you can see the name of each menu. So this is menu one, which is for track and this is the alias. What I wanna do now is add a button here to run an action I'll add in a second. So first click on the plus icon. We get a new button now. And to modify any button, we can shift click on that button and we can edit it from this section here. So first of all, let's change the label to say set name and optionally give it a color. And to assign an action here, let's first open the action list and let's find the SWS rename selected tracks action and right click on it and go copy selected action command ID. We'll go back here and for each of these buttons, as you can see, you can choose separate actions for left clicking, right clicking and middle clicking. Pretty baller. But for now, let's just click on this paste icon here for left click and hit command and V to paste the action ID here. Hit OK. Now we got a button that sets the name for selected tracks. If I click it, I'll get this menu. 
So let's just call these guitar. And if you want, you can also click here to auto number them. So let's hit it and shabloinks, we renamed all our tracks. <laughs> so back to the button, I can move it up and down. So let's just move it next to the set color and set icon buttons. You can also delete any button that you want. So I personally, for example, don't really use icons. I can shift click on this and I can just click on delete. You can also add as many menus as you want. And to do that, I'm going to first go up here to the menu context and click add. I'm going to call this menu SWS. Let's hit OK. And now this menu is open here. But we also need to set up a button to navigate to it. So go back to the first menu. And again, here we're going to add a button. It adds this button eight here. So shift click and I'm gonna call this SWS. And to make any new button open a menu, you need to go down here and type in menu space. And you can use either the number or the name of the menu that you want to navigate to. So I can go menu space 21 or I can go menu space SWS. Once we do that, hitting this button will now take us to the SWS menu that we just created. Let's give this one a color as well, just kind of make it stand out. Now again, most of the SWS stuff, I can just open from up here in the extensions menu, but I can put a couple of the most used ones here as well. For example, I like the Padre LFO generator, which I can find in the action list, right click and go copy selected action ID, then shift click on this, and let's call it LFO generator. And then again, I go paste here, and paste the action right here, and that's that. Let's also maybe just add our cycle action editor up here. Let's choose this button and let's paste the code here. And I'm gonna call it cycle action editor. Now, as you can see, this name is too long and it's kind of now getting over the border. You can add line breaks to these labels by pressing shift and backslash. So now we get a line break here and that'll hopefully help keep things neat and contained in their boxes. Clicking here will open my cycle action editor hit this, I'll get my LFO generator. I can go on to populate the rest of these with SWS menus that I use a lot. And then later you can add more stuff to these buttons or if you don't need them, just delete them. Shift click, delete, shift click, delete, and so on. You can also nest sub menus inside any menu. So let's add a button for this. Let's also create a menu, call it resources. Now I can come back here, shift click on this and call it resources. And once again, type menu space resources. So now we've created a sub menu. I'm just gonna add different resource windows here to open them quickly whenever I want with the sub menu nested inside my SWS menu. Making sense so far? So with the basics out of the way, let me take you to my custom reaper and show you how much stuff I've added to this right after these messages. So hey, how you doing? Did you get an ad for the goddamn Unison MIDI chord pack? Get it. <laughs> anyway, here we are. This is the Reaper I call home. And if I open my radial menu, you can see that there's a lot more buttons and menus that I've added. And I've even added a lot of extra actions to menus that were already there. So it's looking real pimp if I may say so myself. So for example, we now have a grid menu. I can quickly set my grid to half or 16th to set them to triplets. I can have swing or dotted, or I can just click on any of these to go back to normal grid. I can also set my grid to frame rate and all that cool stuff. This recording menu is pretty useful too. I can select the track, arm the selected track, turn pre-roll or the metronome on and off, and I can even choose my record mode from here. Whenever I'm ready, I can start recording, add edit cursor, for example, and now we're recording. If I stop the recording, it'll just stop it. Or I can, for example, go abort recording and that will immediately get rid of the item right away, put our edit cursor back where it was, and it will also delete the source file. So really useful stuff here if you're recording yourself. You can really work a lot faster than if you had hotkeys and had to you know, take your hand off your instruments and put it on the keys. My favorite thing that I've added is this advanced editing tab which has a lot of cool features. I can select a bunch of items and then use this button to adjust their pitch. So this button has different actions assigned to different mouse clicks. So left click will pitch the items up one semitone while right clicking shifts the pitch down by one semitone. And if I hit my middle mouse click, it'll just reset the pitch of the items back to zero. The same thing here happens with playback rates. So make the item faster with left click or make the item slower with right click or just mouse button in the middle to set the item rates back to one. I can remove fades from all these items. I can group them by left clicking here or ungroup them by right clicking. There are some advanced options too. Like if there are gaps between my items, 
I can use the reposition items action to move them to exactly being next to each other. Super useful for video and podcast editing. There's also some automation actions here I use quite a lot. So say I have this track on my project with these items that play in two different parts of my mix. So I want the first occurrence to be louder and the second time I want it to be quieter. So what I can do is shift double click on the item here to set a time selection. And here you can see if I hit the left mouse button, the track will go into latch preview mode and right mouse button will take it back to trim read mode. So I'm gonna left click here to go to latch preview and then just play the track and adjust the volume. So once I'm happy with the level, that's not been written yet, but I can hit right to time selection and that level will now be written to that section of the song. Whenever I'm done, I just hit the right mouse button and go back to read mode, or I can choose another area of the item. And again, same deal, play it, get a level I like and write it to selection. So very quickly and without hotkeys, I've written automation to this track for two sections without affecting the rest of the track. So as you work with the radial menu, just think of different actions you need to run kind of within the same workflow, like recording or editing or comping, and then put them in their own menus or submenus next to each other, and you'll be working more efficiently without any hotkeys or opening a bunch of different menus, all of which are American dreams. I can select a bunch of items and toggle zoom to them, click here again, and I go back to my previous zoom settings. So I hope that by downloading my menu, you'll have a better kind of more robust starting point for your radial menu and then the rest is up to you. So to load my menu or any other menu, you run the settings action and go to the options tab. You can see here we can clear settings just to get rid of all this stuff and start from scratch. I can export my settings which will just create a text file with all the info the script needs in the same folder. And once you have my menu just go import settings, search for my menu and open it right here. I will make this text file available for download in my website. Now I can't end the video without showing you one last super cool thing because I personally use the radio menu differently than how I showed it to you. I did all of this just for you, you lazy bastards. So I'm gonna import another radio menu now by going to import settings and I will open this one, radio menu plugins. And this is how I actually use my radial menu as a way of having access to my plugins that I like using a lot. If I open the radial menu, this will open. And now with any tracks or items selected, I can just put plugins on them really quickly. So I can go to the EQ section. Maybe I can add TDR Nova, go to dynamics and add general dynamics as well. Maybe a bit of M saturator or something. So all my plugins that I use very often are here. They're already categorized and it makes them really easily available at the tip of my fingers without having to go to the effects browser and search for them and all that annoying stuff. Now, unfortunately, I can't share this version of the menu with you for two reasons. The first reason is you need to create your own actions for inserting effects. But when you create those actions, Reaper will generate a new unique command ID and that won't be the same for another system. So for example, if I go to my action list and go to insert effects and look at re-EQ, for example, you can see that my command ID is something like this. And for you, this will not be the same. So that means if I export this menu and give it to you, you won't be able to actually use this button to open re-EQ. Secondly, when it comes to third-party developer plugins, of course, you may or may not have the same plugins that I have. So mostly I'm just showing this to you as a way of demonstrating a different approach to using this menu but you have to actually create your own. So while I can't share these actions with you, you can see in my custom radial menu that I do have a plugin section. I've already created this menu for you with all these subcategories like EQ, dynamics, a harmonics, which is overdrive, distortion, saturation. We also got delay, reverb, modulation, MIDI effects, amp sims, utility stuff like a signal generator, metering plugins, all that jazz. All you need to do is just to create your own insert effects actions, shift click on these buttons and just paste the command IDs like I showed you earlier and Bob's your uncle. So long story short, if you don't like memorizing hotkeys for the price of one hotkey, you can have access to hundreds and hundreds of actions. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm just here to explain stuff. The real heroes are the people who take time and script all of these amazing new features for Reaper. Locasana is no longer part of the community, but I will put a link to where you can donate to Locasana if you want, or else just throw a donation to SWS or Reapack. So these awesome people can keep maintaining these wonderful resources for all of us. Take care of yourselves. Ciao.